No flashy intro for this video. We're doing a basing video today. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society. And this week, we're gonna start this video off with a dramatic reenactment of something that may have happened in a game that you've played in. Let's check it out. And that's when the last cultist is going to swing their scimitar right towards you, Trivery. Uh, and as they swing it, you actually feel the whiff of the scimitar as it flies past your nose. You just narrowly, oh. narrowly miss it. Okay, we're, we're, we're all right, we're, we're all right, we're all right. I'm not looking too bad. That's awesome. Okay, next uh, is gonna be Jensen. What are you doing? Yeah, so Jensen's going to uh, stab out at the one on his left with uh, his rapier, right? Um, so that's going to be uh, 19 plus to hit, and it deals uh, 8 points of damage. Oh man, yeah. So as you stab out with your blade, uh, you feel like you absolutely bring this cultist almost down to their knees. They are right on death's door. Uh, they are looking pretty 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 bad okay uh so then that takes us back up to the top of the initiative order that is going to be trivery oh sick nice it's my turn okay so trivery is going to uh pull out his dagger and he's going to stab into the one that he stabbed before sure you can attack that specific one that uh that one that yes you attacked earlier in the round yeah, uh, the, the one that he stabbed before. That that one. It's like the one on his, on his right. I have no idea which one that is. Come on, Garmin, think. There's only six of them. It, it's got to be one. Is it this one or this one? Maybe it's this one or this one. Uh, this one or this one. It's one of the two. Um, um. Okay, maybe just hide. Maybe, maybe, maybe just hide. That'll, that'll give you a chance to think. Maybe I'll just hide and they'll forget all about it and I'll hide. So I'm not going to say that this exact situation happened to me in a game that I recently ran with one of my tables. I'm not gonna say that. But what I will say is if this has ever happened to you, something that I likely can relate to, this video could be for you because I'm gonna try to solve this problem as simply as I possibly can. So to start off, I have these cultist models. All of them are exactly the same. I got them out of a pre-painted box. I'm actually not sure which set it was. I actually don't even think they're called cultists. I think they're called shadow dancers, but all of that really doesn't matter. They all look the same. So if I put them all out onto my gaming table at once, I can already see the problems arising and how I'll end up getting confused with which one is which. So I wanna solve it, but I'm gonna be making a lot of these. So really what the goals are, are to base them in a way that makes them identifiable and doing it in really quick and basic techniques that also look good. So with that said, let's jump into it and see what I came up with. So one thing that I really like to do when I start a project off like this is go through all of the scrap that I have from other builds and potentially use some of that on a little build like this. It saves me time, it saves me effort, and I might have the perfect piece, or it might even like make me a little bit more creative in the way that I approach the project or the problem that I'm trying to solve. So I did exactly that with this project. I found these little bricks that I had from some unknown project from forever ago, and I found a really nice way to stack them on the bases so that it makes almost like a little kind of tablet almost looking thing, but it also looks like crumbling block that's just stacked up at the foot of these cultists. I pulled out my Eileen's Tacky Glue, which is my favorite PVA glue of choice, and then I glued the bricks down into this pattern, making sure to do every single one of my bases exactly the same. The reason that I did it this way is because what I want is when my players are choosing to attack one of these cultists, I want them to predictably and reliably be able to go, I am attacking this one, and be able to point it out every time without having to get confused about where to look. With keeping to that theme, I got all of the blocks glued down to where they belonged, let them dry, and then moved on to mod podging them. Now, I will say on a project this small, 
Mod Podging the foam is not a necessary step. The reason that I like to do it is one, it gives me my black base coat, but two, it also gives me a predictable painting surface. I know how Black Magic Craft base coat is going to respond to paint, and that's just my comfort level. So I don't necessarily need it on a project this small. I could just use my acrylic craft paint, but in this example, I like to use it because I know it. So I covered all of the foam in Black Magic Craft base coat and let that dry, of course, and then was able to move on to paint. I wanted these stones to be brighter than I would normally paint them. You'll see why here in the next step. But so instead of using my three color paint scheme, I actually stepped up to a four color paint scheme for this. The absolute most base coat is a charcoal gray that's been watered down. The next thing that I did was a medium tone of pewter gray. I followed that up by a overbrushing of elephant gray. And then finally, I did the very front surface as well as all of the edge highlighting with a granite gray. All of these are very cheap, you know, the 50 cent craft paint acrylics. This is nothing fancy here. But like I said earlier, I made sure to go lighter than I normally would because of the next step. And that next step is going to be numbering the bases. This is gonna be the way that my players can absolutely go, I want to attack number one, or I want to attack number six. For this, I chose to use a higher quality acrylic paint. In this example, I'm going to be using Scale 75's Blood Red, and I chose that specific color for two reasons. One, I felt that the red both matched the models and looked culty in general. It has that sinister vibe to it over top of the gray stone, but also it looks like blood, and that will be my story-based reason for why my freehand skills are garbage. <laughs> Speaking of freehand skills, I did water this paint down just a little bit to get it to flow off of my brush nice and smooth. And in the application, I made sure to sketch on first really slowly and lightly before I did a couple more layers to finally block out the color and get it as vibrant as I would eventually want it to be. I ended up grabbing this shot just because I thought it was a neat thing to look at, but here is a view of all of the stages of the painting for these models. It just happened that I had the exact right amount to do a model per stage. So starting all the way on the left being the Mod Podge coat, all the way to the right being the finished desired result of the model. And I'm just super pleased with how these turned out. And it's fun to just kind of look back on the project and see what each individual coat of paint did to the model. Fun is over time to finish up the project, or it's actually a sad way to say that, but uh, fun shot aside, let's get the project all finished up. Once I had them all finished up, I could have stopped here, but I liked for the bases to look a little bit more finished. So the way that I did that was I pulled out my Scale 75 Autumn Ground, which is just a basing texture, and I spread that very evenly across the bottom of the bases. The reason I picked this particular type of basing material is solely because it dries very evenly. I didn't want it to be super clumpy and lumpy. I wanted it to just be sort of flat, just like the black base was, but with just a little bit more texture. And also it dries glossy. It doesn't dry to a matte finish, but it dries to that glossy finish. And so that just felt kind of icky and culty to me, all working towards the goal of what I wanted the models to look like. Then I pulled out my Gamer's Grass Tiny Dark Moss, and I used super glue to apply that all over the bases, just one color grass. I didn't want to do anything that took a huge long time to dry because a lot of the other stages took time to dry. And if it's only one color of tufts, I only have to mess with one color of tufts. So it makes the project a lot faster. But with that said, that was all that I did to these models. I'm not saying that anything in this video is going to blow your mind or change how you approach anything, but it is a really simple solution to make these very generic models that all look exactly the same, be very identifiable as, you know, bad guy scatter that's gonna be all over my boards. It makes it easy for my players to tell me who they're attacking. It makes it easy for me to keep track of them on their hit point lists. So for me, that's best case scenario. I like doing videos like this every once in a while, something that's absolutely basic and simple and straightforward. It might be something that some of you have never thought of before, but I would say that most people probably have thought of doing something like this in the past, but it's just my way of being able to say, look how easy it can be to just quickly knock this out. And honestly, for me, it only took me a few hours and that included all of the major chunks of dry time. This is not difficult at all to do. And I think war gamers probably are out there going like, well, my army 
basically I do this for every army that I make, right? That was an awful way of saying that and talking in general, but that's the general idea, right? I'm sure that they've done this a whole bunch. I just like that this is like the one step further for Dungeons and Dragons where now my players can just simply be like I attack number three and then I write down number three's hit points and uh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And the number one way that you can help a small YouTube channel like this is to share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it. Like this video if you liked it. Comment down below if you would like to, because that also helps with algorithmy stuff. With that said, that's it. Until next week, thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you.